let's zone in a little bit on UTEP and Colorado. Okay. Because I'm going to toot our own horns here. I, I think we're about as clued in on these two opponents right now as anybody. We, You and I both yep. did extensive breakdowns where we talked probably the – the, you know the more the most inside people of those teams that cover yeah. the programs. I, I talked to Brett Bloomquist from the El Paso Times, and you talked to Brian Fon- Fonseca, um, New Jersey Advanced Media, and he's the he's the no, you're, that, that's Rutgers, yeah. Col- Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, Sean. I just got off the phone with the Rutgers guy. That'll be that'll come late next week. We're really uh, screwed if you talk to the Rutgers guy about no, Colorado. Yeah, that'd be screwy. That would be weird. <laughs> Brian Howell. Brian Howell of um, the Boulder Daily Camera is who I talked to. And, I mean, he's like you. He's written several books. Um, and he, I've done two. Well, that's that's almost so. <laughs> but Brian is very well-versed in Colorado. So, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Well, yeah, UTEP, I'll tell you this. I read your UTEP. It's similar to Colorado. I mean, they're replacing 75% of their roster right now. When, when you look at what uh-huh. they have, they have a 34 34- year old head coach um coming over from austin p and you know you look at this team scotty walden scotty walden is the name 34 it kind of looks like pj fleck 2.0 <laughs> he kind of does he kind of does so yeah you mentioned it they could have 18 new starters that's 18 of 22 men obviously 18 75 percent of their roster changes it looks like you said that they're this is this is interesting sean think about the dynamics here Dylan Rayola, first game, playing a playing a team with a completely restructured defense and nobody back in the secondary. All new secondary. Works out pretty well for him, right? Yeah, and it's going to be loud. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you look at Dana Dimmel had been the coach at UTEP before, former mm-hmm. K-State, longtime guy. Walden wiped out everybody. Um, only like one behind-the-scenes person with – limited experience stayed on one I mean, support staff yeah and then there was like a guy that had been there for like 30 years involved in the football program he was relieved um so it was it was a complete you know wipe out of everybody at utep um so that will be their first game coming into memorial stadium with all of these new people i think i've seen an early point spread at 28 points already from Nebraska. yeah yeah i saw 28 and a half and going back to what um scotty walden did that's what you do, Sean. Dana Dimmel was 29 games under 500. Okay. 20 and 49. He went to one bowl game. Yeah. 20 and 49 was Dana Dimmel's record. The new coach apparently felt like you just got to get everybody out. There's too, that's too much losing. I mean, it is that that culture needs to be removed sometimes. And that's obviously that's what he felt. This wall that intrigues me though, because he's a, at one point he was a 22 year old offensive coordinator. Yeah. For a school in Michigan. Um, yeah. He's risen fast in this business. He was the interim head coach at Southern Miss at like age 28. Yeah. And yeah. And then he went to Austin P and was 26 and 14 at Austin P and obviously, you know, obviously got a lot of people, got a lot of AD's attention. Uh, the UTEP's attention for sure. And here he is, 34 years old. And and Sean, I just, it, it's a lot. It's a lot for UTEP. It's a lot to think about for UTEP to come in here against, you know, a team that is is pretty established now, right? Under rule in his second year. Nebraska does have a lot of players back. Um, Nebraska has its whole staff back. There's a huge advantage there for Nebraska. Cade McConnell will start at quarterback more what than likely. That? Is that right? And he he started last year, took over. He was the fourth string guy last year, took mm-hmm. over, uh, finished the year out. Had a great spring game, 24-32 for 239 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, went 11 of 16 for 139 yards in the fourth quarter with two touchdown passes. So he looked good. There's another kid that came from Austin P, mm-hmm. who was a backup there, uh, Skylar Locklear. Uh, but I think McConnell will be their guy. They do have a first team all conference defensive kind of you know edge player returning. Maurice Westmoreland, mm-hmm. um, 6'2, 235. He's a JUCO guy out of Kilgore, uh, but he's played at UTEP the last few seasons. So that's their best defensive guy. Uh, they did bring in a running back from Austin P that was the best back, one of the best players for Austin P, uh, Javion Jackson. Um, he rushed for 1,373 yards and 10 touchdowns on 252 carries, 
only five eight though 200 pounds so kind of a shorter built to the ground guy yeah l- listen to us listen to us breaking down utep so thank do. you to Brent Bloomquist, Bloomquist, but his expectation is they're probably a four win type team at the, I mean, that's their, and it's a rebuilding year is, is what he politely said. Well, um, I will, Colorado. I will politely say this. That's a good opener after what Nebraska's experienced. What since the COVID year, basically in openers, tough openers, road op- game, road games, you don't win, um, going to Ireland, um, having sort of a debacle there and that taking its toll on a lot of people and getting, you know, off ultimately leading to the head coach getting fired, not just because of that, but it's, it makes sense to me. Opening at Ohio state yeah. in 2020 it, it beat 52 to 17 with Justin Fields. And yeah, it was, I mean, one of, it was a pure example to me of how far Nebraska's program had fallen because I probably did it too, but the media core came back and said how well Nebraska played in a 52 to 17 loss. And it signified to me, my God, this program has fallen so far. I can't even imagine. I mean, they, they went and lost 52 to 17 and the narrative we came back was, was the narrative we came back with was, Hey, that wasn't that bad. They played pretty well. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> I just envisioned you already arguing with Parker Gabriel about that. Back at nah, I wasn't even arguing because I think I was kind of contributing to it. And I felt kind of stupid afterwards. Like, what are we doing here? Um, but anyway, Colorado, Colorado, 50 new faces, um, scholarship players, 39 incoming transfers, plus the 10 freshman recruits, true freshmen. So that's that's technically 49. But they the lat, when I talked to Brian the other day, he was talking about them bringing in another player that day. So that would be that would mark number 50. Um all they brought in 10 10 transfer offensive linemen. They will start an offensive a brand new offensive line, a totally revamped offensive line. Um they gave up Colorado gave up 56 sacks last year. Now some of that was Shadur Sanders holding on to the ball too much. They but Howell Sean interestingly enough still feels that Colorado is a 6, 7 or 8 win team. That's what I think Nebraska is. So if you just go by Howell and you go by Sipple, maybe it's an even match. I I don't know how you can say that though with all the newness, a completely new offensive 100 line. Like I, I mean, look, they got a first rounder at quarterback, and Hunter they do. They is a do. first rounder. They they might have the two highest draft prospects in the Big Twelve, but is that enough? I don't know. I mean, these offensive linemen are going to be coming into Lincoln for a night game. <laughs> we're doing this thing. Everybody's caught on to it too, where you, we're we're getting ready to count false starts, just like where the crowd erupts, almost like. They used to erupt when Doc Sadler's teams caused shot clock violations. <laughs> wow. the, louder. But, oh, you louder. know, like when like Nebraska basketball gets a shot. I mean, like the place erupts. It's, it's hilarious <laughs> when you think about it. So, yeah, I mean, that's definitely something to watch. Um, it should do or I mean, a, a lot of this does come down to Shadur Sanders. And that's what Brian Howell said. He's the key to the whole thing. If he's playing well and gets pr- the protection he needs, He's going to have a big year, and, and Colorado's going to put points on the board. But it seems like a big if to me. Um, you mentioned Travis Hunter. Travis Hunter is a good player, two way two way player. I think he's a better offensive player than he is defensive player. Um, they have Levanta Bentley, a guy named Levanta Bentley, who had sixty tackles last year. He's a he's a line, inside linebacker, probably their best defender. All they although they brought in some pretty good transfers, and namely. B.J. Green, who was a second-team All-Pac-12, basically a pass rusher. We'll call him defensive lineman, but he's 6'1", 270, so he's a little hybrid to me. Um, but he had six sacks at ASU. Um, it's like I agree with you, Sean. How do you read them? How do you how do you get a handle on what Colorado yeah. – how do you get a handle on what Colorado is? And you have a coach that's really not that accessible. No, they don't. He, yeah, the, the the writers there don't see any of the spring. They did cover the. They did get to see the spring game. By the way, we should mention Sean Colorado has a new defensive coordinator, um, Robert Livingston. If you know where he came from, 
I will give you, um, I'll give you a $50. If you know where Robert Livingston came from, <laughs> like Western Michigan or something. Nope. You don't know. He can't, you know what? He was with Zach Taylor. At, he was a Cincinnati okay. Bengals secondary coach, but like all those, a lot of those guys left, like their offensive coordinator that got demoted. He's now Sean Lewis is who you're talking about. He's the head coach at San Diego state. He, he he landed as a head coach at San Diego And then State. O'Boyle, the old line coach, is there now with him. Yeah, I think and so. It got so bad last year that I was told O'Boyle had his house up for sale during the season. Oh, that's not awkward at all. I mean, he, like, <laughs> once, well, he came with Lewis, and once Lewis was demoted yeah. and publicly kind of. November 3rd, I think the demotion occurred, so early November. Can you imagine, though, being the offensive coordinator for Deion Sanders' son? Ah, uh, it's a little pressure, right? Um, so yeah, November third, Sean Lewis got demoted, and they 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 promoted Pat Shermer. Pat Shermer now is the play caller. So essentially, Sean, they have a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator. So yeah, tons of change. And you know what you'd say, Sean, if you look at the totality of the non-conference schedule, you feel pretty good about about it. I mean, if you just whip through it real fast, what do we talk about? UTEP has all new secondary and a new defense. A 3-3-5, by the way, which Nebraska works against every day. UTEP will run a 3-3-5 with five, with five brand new starters in the secondary. Colorado has 50 new scholarship faces. UNI, Northern Iowa, lost everybody up front on defense. Okay? Um, and they're not picked to be very good this year. It's a, it's a very, very... I mean, I'm just going to put it kindly, manageable non-conference schedule. Yeah, and being at home for all these games, then then you have Illinois. Even if it's on a Friday, it's at home. Right. So it, it sets up, and then your first road game is at 11 a.m. Yeah, so God, like, it does set up. You're going to get home. God, it I mean, the nice thing about an 11 a.m. road game is you're going to get home at a reasonable hour. Yeah. Like, you you get back to Lincoln by dinner time. God, it sets up really well. I mean, they have a – it's. The football gods are like, you better get this figured out, Nebraska, because we're not going to be this nice to you much longer. <laughs> That's no pressure on you, Coach Rule. Um, but, but you're right. It does set up. I, I don't think Matt Rule wants to hear that conversation in that. Sorry, Coach. Yeah, in the, quite like put like that. But you're right. It's set up about as well as you could imagine, right? I'd watch that Rutgers game, though, Sean. Watch that Rutgers game. That'll be a fight. Oh, yeah, it's a fight. Yeah, Rutgers likes that team. Will Nebraska be able to stop the run? Because Rutgers is going to try to. They got a guy named Monic. Mon Mon I can't say his name. It's hard to pronounce. But they, he, he looks he's their best offensive player. They got a little running back that's tough. 